Okay, so uh, uh, I'm giving uh, a talk which is more interactive. My first talk was sort of me talking as fast as I could to only take one and a half times as long as I, as I had. Uh, this is different. I have just four slides. The first one was actually written by Kristoff in an email to me when I was trying to figure out, well, what should I talk about and continue on? Um, uh, so uh, this is a very different tone of things, uh, but I, I really, it's so useful to get input from people here, but whenever we were at the party, like last night, all my discussions were pretty high level and nerdy, to be honest, and, and this is more basic kind of stuff, so I wanted to talk about it. Um, discussions were great, um, I felt very at home, um, not usually a socializing guy, but boy, this crowd is good, <laughs> and the music was lots of fun. Um, okay, so uh, Christoph had uh, written me and said, well, you know, when, once he got into this stuff, uh, as you know from yesterday's talk, he's deep into it, uh, into parts of it that nobody else has really explored yet. Um, but once he was uh, getting into this stuff, one of the things he really became apparent to him, and the biggest compliment is he wants to try to imitate in his future uh, in electronic music, is that Hakan Audio, which is part of me, I mean, I have a day job, so uh, uh, it, it, there are no full-time employees uh, or anything like that, but uh, that Hawken Audio and, and uh, dealing with uh, Hawken Audio is very different than uh, other companies. So he said, you know, this is something to talk about and to mention outright. Um, uh, people here might know this, but people elsewhere don't. So first of all, uh, this is something everybody knows. The electronic and acoustic instrument worlds are very different. I grew up as an acoustic musician. I went to Lübeck and visit, I can't even remember the guy's name, Helvig was his name. He lived in an old part of the city wall there and built string instruments. And that's where I bought my viola and that's where I, you know, you really talk to the builder of your instrument, especially if you're buying, uh, after uh, 10 or 15 years of practice, if you're buying a more expensive instrument. Synthesizer is really different. It's more of an industry. You rarely actually talk to the manufacturer of your, uh, to, you know, to the maker of your instrument. Uh, and in that way, Hawken Audio uh, is much closer to an acoustic instrument maker. Um, it still feels weird to say Hawken Audio, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I am registered in the state of Illinois as a company, so it's for real. <laughs> and, uh, and yes, and it also feels weird when people come up to me and say, oh, I have a Haken on my studio. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Uh, but of course, these things happen. And actually, in a similar way, this, of course, uh, Bob uh, uh, Moe mentioned the same thing to me. That oh, yeah. At some time, um, when I met him at NAMM, actually not that long before he passed away, I finally asked him, you know, I really don't know how to say your name. Do you say a Moog or a Moog? And then he asked me, well, how do you say your name? Do you say Haken or Hacken? And, <laughs> and I said, well, I don't care. But, and he said, well, I don't care either. <laughs> that was that. So I still don't know how to say that. Um, uh, oh, well. Can I ask you, yes. what, what is the preferred name of the instrument? I often just call it a Hawking Continuum, but do you prefer... Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I think, I mean, for me it's weird to say, you know, it still feels odd to say that, cause, but that, that works well. Oh. Um, uh, because if people look that up, they'll find it. The word yeah. Continuum, boy, there's a lot of really cool yeah. games and, yeah. and health plans and uh, whatever else called Continuum. Album? So, yeah, 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 yeah I'm exactly. I was wondering about the inclusion of the word fingerboard. Um, you know, it used to, uh, at very first, actually before I even had silk screen or anything fancy like that, I was calling it the, the Hawken keyboard, and people would come up and try to play their favorite piano concerto, and <laughs> were not very happy, so, <laughs> so that's why that name changed. So, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, people seem to uh, call it just Continuum, but since that's not searchable, Hawken Continuum is yes. really good. Also, that's what Sally had picked for the user group name, so I think it's sticking. So. We almost called it Fingerboard Con. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty long, yeah. Uh, continue, kind of. Slides are for the yeah. Okay, so then, then the next thing is that uh, players are not just customers. Um, I want them to enjoy playing the continuum. And that really, you know, if you have something that you spend your life doing as a, since I'm not making money at it, I guess at least in the USA, that means it's a hobby. But as a very serious hobby, um, then it, it, there's nothing more disappointing than somebody suffering because of your work. Uh, so, so it's, and in fact, to be honest, most of my communications with people is, is uh, when things went wrong. And so it's always so amazing, like the other day, somebody, I was saying, oh, and if you have a problem with this update, because the current update, as those of you who have done the 828, takes a very long time. It totally re reorganizes whole flash. It's a total rework of things. Um, 
you know, the person was a little surprised. Well, I've never had a problem with updating. I've had Continuum since 2008. So that's just so nice to hear. Because, of course, when I talk to people, it's, they have some problem with something. But anyway, I really do want people to enjoy playing the Continuum. And, and, and I really, I mean, I think a lot of people would enjoy it, but I much prefer to have people buy it that actually want it. And if people would rather have something else, since I, you know, it's just better, uh, better to have people like it and uh, much more fun for me. If I'm not going to make uh, uh, lots of money at it, at least I want it to be enjoyable. Um, so the new features, when we put in new features, are available when they are ready and not when marketing requires. Um, well, th this is a, you know, a nice thing. I mean, we're trying to do the best we can. Uh, on the other hand, sometimes they're available long after we were sure were available. And uh, as somebody commented, one of the first times was Ed's talk yesterday about the DSP maps was something that we didn't don't have ready yet. Mm -hmm. And last year, I, when we did the 8.0 release, I didn't want them to say, oh, well, very soon, well, you know, this is just temporary, very soon we'll have something else. Well, it's a year later now. And we don't have something else yet, but it's... it's well, it depends how you define very soon. Yes, and also we did improve what was there. What was there was even worse to use at the very first. So, so it's it's uh, and and it's just fiddly, you know. The the layered stuff. I've gotten a lot of email about it now, of course, because of continue con. But the the layered stuff is somewhat fiddly to use. Everything about the continue. If you are impatient and you just want a fast thing, it's not the right thing for you anyway. Uh, you're spending too much money on an instrument. You're not going to get much out of. If you don't, you know, it's it's if you're rich enough to buy a Stradivarius, but you never practice, it, it, don't bother. You know. Somebody else can have that instrument. And uh, this is a similar thing. Uh, it's really if you like spending time with it. Um, but once you figure it out, it, it's certainly not impossible, as you saw yesterday. You know, Christoph can uh, 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 certainly get around it very quickly. And as long as you don't want to do everything that the master does, as long as uh, you're happy just putting together things and using his post processing and then modifying it somewhere or something, um, I think you can do it. Um, in any case, uh, teachers are ready. Uh, both Ed and I have day jobs. They have to take precedence. Uh, I can't do phone support. I say I want people to enjoy playing Continuum. Many people expect that when they uh, you know, get a new device, especially if they paid lots of money for it, well, look, it's a synthesizer. You better sound good. I mean, if I buy a cheap synthesizer, it's okay if I don't sound good. <laughs> if I buy an expensive synthesizer, I expect to sound good right away. I expect there to be set up videos, and I expect, you know, well, it's interesting. It's back to the acoustic instrument making. You know, if somebody buys an expensive violin, they don't expect to be a great violinist. But somehow with synthesizers, it's very much so. Uh, it, it's very unusual to buy an expensive synthesizer and then actually have to learn about it. And, you know, I tell people, look, just spend two weeks before you hook up your existing synthesizers. And they're totally, well, my gig is way, you know, I have to play this in a concert before two weeks from now. You know, it's, I don't know anybody who, you know, buys their first trumpet or their first violin uh, when they're going to play their big gig in two weeks. But in any case, um, uh, uh, it, it's a different thing. But I tell people, experiment with internal sounds. You really want to look around. Oh, I've, I've bought lots of synthesizers. I could check out internal sounds in three minutes. And anyway, so that attitude, you know, it's okay. But if you're really going to get something out of it, uh, you, you want to find the, the new attitude. You want to have... Uh, 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 fun with it and really explore. It. So, um, and yeah, the features that are there are only ones that Ed and I think are useful. I'm smart enough to know that I can't often decide. Um, and as Ed mentioned yesterday, sometimes we have clunkers, sometimes we have very good things. But in general, especially if you ask the general public what do you want, well, the first request will always be I want it to work with all my existing synthesizers. So, request one is funny because they ask, well, can I control it? And so the answer is yes. Uh, but it's not its primary function. There's many things out there that can control your sampler. And if that's really all you want to do, then this isn't right for you. Well, so they're kind of taken aback and say, all you want to do, that's what I've done my, you know, that's what I've built my whole synthesizer life at. I've been very successful. So yeah, it's not that samplers are bad. It's just that this really isn't a sampler controller, uh, or at least not the most cost effective one. Um, Hawken Audio's focus is only the instrument itself. Not other possible products I could uh, build for commercial success. Yes, I'm not trying to make the Kmart of synthesizers. I'm not trying to build a brand name. I'm trying to do any of that. I want, I want to build a nice instrument. So that's sort of a different thing. And uh, making a whole series of different products uh, isn't, isn't the goal here. 
Uh, this one was actually really touched me that you wrote this because it's true, but it's neat that, well, of course, you've known me for a while, but you know, I care about details that nobody will ever know or see or understand, but that improve the overall quality of the instrument. And yeah, you know, I want to make the best thing I can, so that way, I guess it is a serious hobby uh, if I could uh, make something cheaper in a way that people won't notice or it falls apart after two years instead of after 30 years of owning it or 50 years of owning it. Uh, you know, just silly things, like I spent a lot, I just noticed and heard from other people too that were uh, real, own many synthesizers, that old synthesizers always die because the display goes out and you can't find a replacement. And, uh, uh, or uh, the other thing is capacitors go bad, you know, so how can I make it so that, you know, I use capacitors, I'll still be there in 50 years and still high quality, well, it costs more, but uh, it exists, uh, it's possible to do. So anyway, and I doubt anybody knows what capacitor I use inside. Um, but uh, the overall sound quality of the output's being compared to uh, very high-end audio equipment, and so that's quite touching. Um, anyway, uh, building a continuum is not a day job. It's more a way of life. Um, and I, yeah, I put all the money back in the continuum, not communications and marketing. Now, I can say all this stuff, and I say I here because I don't want to offend uh, uh, other, speak for other people that I don't even pay, but Ed is never made any money off of the continuing increased off now, well, as you can see, spent significant time on it. Lots of people have contributed. Sally organized the continue con and all this stuff, and, you know, she didn't get, musicians always write to me and say, oh, well, you know, uh, I'm really interested in this, you know, uh, can, you, uh, you know can, can you do an endorsement or something like that? And for a musician, uh, a lot of the musicians are actually quite well off, the successful ones. They, they don't do it for money reasons, or maybe it's habit, but, but one of the reasons is, you know, if a company won't even endorse a musician, then there's no buy-in. It's like, wow, you know, you don't value me enough to give me one of your instruments? Well, anyway, I'm just a guy building these things in this basement with help from father-in-law, uh, so it's not, uh, uh, it's just not that kind of thing. Can't do that. And people have been very good at about it. One of the first uh, famous names to, to get a continuum was uh, Jordan Rudis, and even people that aren't into dream theater, even people that, you know, they look and say, oh my God, it survived a Jordan Rudis concert tour. At least it's tough, you know? And so in that way, um, and the guy's perfectionist in, in his style of music, he's, you know, he's just doing amazing things. So, um, uh, uh, so that's great. But um, after that, then, of course, what also happens is, well, it's an expensive item, and the people that tend to buy it are musicians that are already very successful. Well, the problem there is they're also really booked up. And, you know, I've, I learned very early on the person that is uh, uh, not the super successful musician and the person that kind of struggles to buy it off and, and puts off buying their new car. In fact, somebody wrote me that and said, well, yeah, I bought this instead of getting a new car, but this is a lot more fun. <laughs> uh, so, in any case, uh, you know, the, the person that struggles is actually often the person you really want because that's the, yes, they're not super famous yet, and if I had a big advertising campaign, you know, nobody would know them from anyone else, but they're the people that could really spend the time and love on it and, and really get something out of it. So uh, it is a bit of a conundrum for me. I mean, it's nice to say, yes, I want to build the best no matter what, but it's, it's, uh, it's a tough thing. It just as a compliment and as a consequence of all these one things, I realized at uh, last Superbus is so I, I came to a couple of music messer and a couple of Superbus, and when each year each company is coming with a brand new stuff they want to advertise, and with Akon deal, you can always come with the same <laughs> instrument, just improving the same over the years, and that's a very different way of going from most other company. You're not looking for new stuff all the time. Yes, yes, and, and, and to be fair, that doesn't attract yeah. the media. Yeah, it doesn't, no, it, uh, it's an interesting thing, you know, you go to NAM and you look around and every, without exception, everybody advertises, you will sound much better if you buy this and there's no learning curve, you know, so, and, and you know, and, and, and expressive instruments, that seems especially weird, it's like, okay, so you have this deep, heartfelt expression without any skill. It's, it's a very bizarre combination, like, does that even make sense? Yeah. I, I don't know. But uh, certainly nobody would expect to buy any acoustic instrument and expect, uh, because it was an expensive instrument, that they could show their expression without ever practicing. Uh, it's a very odd. I, I, don't, I don't get that. Um, but yes, uh, the media and, and the whole industry is very much into what's new. And in fact, one of the reasons I don't want to talk about what's new too much is it oversells. Even this layered stuff. Okay, so Christoph uses it. You can do amazing things with it. You know, the core of the continuum is still the fast control. 
and the post-processing is nice. You know what? The H9 is really good too. And really, no matter how much you post-process your playing, it's not going to improve by great post-processing. You know, the thing that really makes your playing good is learning control. And he's not, you know, he puts a lot of work into that post-processing, but he's very aware of this. And so if you know that and you get this new stuff, that's great. But I hate to, you know, sell this. So then people ask me, well, should I buy this? Or I have a 3X continuum. Should I upgrade to 6X? And it's like, well, you can do all the stuff that his stuff was doing when you're 3X. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, will, you know, are there things that are only possible on the 6X? Uh, I'm hard pressed to think of them, but sure, over time, some, you know, something will happen. And, and it's a little hard to, to say. And I, I just, I would rather people practice uh, uh, and uh, spend time, you know, enjoy it. And practicing when I was a kid was horrible. In fact, I was upset at my little brother because he he actually enjoyed practicing. It made me so angry. It's like, oh, look, what a cheater. You know, it's just, oh, man. Um, anyway. Well, then, I want to share the story about playing the tape of you practicing. Oh, yes. So my mom, who's now passed away, but a huge influence on me because I spent, what, uh, at least, uh, you know, since I was a little kid, uh, uh, every day practicing and such and uh, eventually, I switched from violin to viola because they have to treat violas nicer in our small town. Uh, they need us for pit orchestras and for things. And uh, and boy, if you're mean to a violist, one time I got up and just left to rehearsal because the conductor made some snarky comment about me. Now I had told him I need the music ahead of time, and I you know so I can circle the area where you can actually hear the viola and really practice that part. Um, but uh, in any case, he made the snark, so I just got up and left. And ever afterwards, I was treated so well. You know, was, <laughs> everybody was eggshells and, uh, you know, just so careful. And I, to be fair, I really did practice the part where I played air viola for 99%. And for the solos, I, I, I could come in. Uh, in any case, uh, my mom, uh, you know, was a uh, very old school German. There are six kids. I was the third kid and the most uh, troubling uh, kid. And uh, I just hated practicing. So my younger sister was not into it either. Uh, she'd rather play with horses and do other things. Um, so um, uh, uh, we would, my mom, there's such a cacophony when six kids were playing, she couldn't tell if I was actually practicing or not. So she gave us this little reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, which was great for my two-string kite. You could r roll up the uh, kite string really fast with it and do other things with it. Uh, for practicing, I didn't like, but very quickly we figured out, without any music concrete background, that you can duplicate tapes, that you can do all these other things. So my mom then had to buy a big tape eraser when she figured out we were doing that. Huge magnet. Um, and, uh, well, then you just keep a backup tape somewhere. Uh, so uh, eventually we got cassette recorders, so I couldn't do the kite string thing uh, uh, and, and wreck the tape recorder all the time. But uh, in any case, it was uh, uh, an ordeal. I, I remember... Oh, we had a TV for a while, too. I remember watching the, the moon landing and a few other things. I was born on the day that the first man was put into space, uh, which is nice. I got my dad a job in the U.S. It had nothing to do with the Cold War or the space race. But uh, uh, in any case, uh, I do remember the first moon landing. We had this wonderful TV. Later on, I figured out I, you know, there were adult, t uh, not adult in the modern sense of the word. There were TV shows made for a Vox, I don't know what you call it in English, people that are grown up, for grown ups, that's how a kid would say it, uh, for grown ups. I, I could understand the humor and stuff. It was so cool, you know. And we weren't allowed to watch TV, of course. But uh, when she was out shopping or something, we would watch TV. I remember watching uh, Gilligan's Island, and I was just so amazed that you know, you know, this is a grown-up show, and I could actually understand what's going on. I, I watched one later. It's uh, pretty amazing. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so I heard her come in the driveway, and of course I did the usual thing. I got the wet towel out of the bathroom. She would feel the TV, and it was uh, so I put a wet towel over it, which turns out. Ah, in my later life, I learned it wasn't so good. Um, <laughs> boy, I'm really off topic here. Um, uh, but uh, put a wet towel over it, uh, cooled down the TV and stuff. Somehow she still, f oh yes, and then I gave her this long story. Yes, I did all my practicing while you were shopping. Anyway, she tricked me. She had the viola in the back of the car still. I never took oh. it out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> and now my, my siblings tell me I'm misremembering. I swear this happened, but uh, apparently it's not true. But in any case, I remember standing there terrified as she ripped out the TV and, you know, uh, and then I heard this clinking, you know, broken glass noise. Anyway, that was in the TV. You didn't have a TV after that. Um, uh, apparently, she did donate it to somebody. I don't know what I thought I heard as a little kid, but it made a big impression on me. Um, after that, I watched TV at friends' houses. Anyway, so, um, yeah. So, uh, uh, no, but my mom, you know, forced me to play. And the greatest thing about that whole thing is I actually didn't end up hating music.
which is amazing. But the, the other thing is that um, I know I don't know. So like working with Ed or something is really useful because it's so easy for people, you know, like they, they walk up to Continuum and say, well, let me try it. I want to see what it does. And that's okay. You know, and you do want to try it before you play. In fact, it's wonderful to see people's faces light up and stuff. But it's also an incredibly arrogant thing to say about an instrument. You know, if you walked up to a Stradivarius not having ever played a violin and you're trying to figure out, you know, what does this uh, $50,000 piece of equipment do and you're going to judge it, you know, having never played violin before, you know, you would just never do that. It's just totally bizarre. But in electronics, everything, us engineers, our job is to make things easier, which is meant you know, mostly de-skilling, you know, to the point of the continuum, you know, when I tell people, no, you really want to practice something, then they sit down and play and say, well, this isn't hard, this is great. Well, yes, you can do something right away with it, but you really aren't getting your money's worth out of it uh, unless you spend time on it, and vice versa. If you spend the time on it, the money is a lot, and, but at the same time, uh, you know, if, if something that you're going to play for the next uh, uh, 10, 20, 30, you know, for the rest of your life, I hope, um, uh, yeah, the initial investment is there, but it's a small part in the end compared to your time. Unless you don't value your time at all, uh, it, it's a, a worthwhile investment. All right. So yeah, I don't want to scare people off from it. You can certainly do things right away. We've had uh, all sorts of major national concerts in various countries where the funding for the concert comes late. The soloist, I won't mention where this, what country this was in, otherwise people will find the performance. But the soloist that's playing with an orchestra and there's choreographed dancers and that, you know, the orchestra's full of musicians who played since there were three and if they were good enough they could play in this national orchestra. There were um, uh, choreographed dancers, there was all this stuff and the soloist was a continuum player who got his continuum nine days before the concert. And you know, that isn't even weird at all. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's a bizarre thing. Uh, if you are that soloist and you're watching this, I, no offense, you know, I realize this is the way the world worked. And there was plenty of applause, but because people don't know what to expect. People's expectations aren't very high, especially you know, if it's something new. But it's, it's kind of too bad. You know, it's actually we're cheapening our art by doing such things. Yes, I know you can press the flute button or the recorder button, but you know, maybe, uh, uh, I should say flute button or trumpet button, not, not tape recorder button. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think you know we should have pride in what we do. Every other musician has pride in their performance skills. Well, we should have that too. All right, expressive controllers. So right now there is this boom uh, of expressive controllers. For the first 30 years of my work, this really wasn't an issue, so it didn't come up. But in the last year and a half, uh, especially, it's it, it's really hit hard. Um, if people know about the Continuum at all, I don't have a big advertising campaign, they'll always mention it in the same breath as some other controller. Oh, you need this or, or, or a Hockey Continuum in order to uh, do this amazing performance. And uh, you know, it's, it's totally made equivalent. And again, MIDI keyboards are pretty interchangeable. You know, if you're a performer, it makes a huge difference. Does your MIDI controller have snap action or not? It really does make a big difference for performance, but you can use that same snap action controller with whatever uh, 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 synthesizer you want because all the fine structure is automated it's can synthesizer it doesn't you know it, it's sort of a separate issue so the controller matters but they really aren't interchangeable so uh, for expressive controllers it really varies what people are looking for and there's very valid things to do with controllers and I would say some people and in fact the majority of people really aren't looking to revolutionize their life or find a new hobby or something. What they're looking for is a new way to do pitch bends and to do aftertouch. And this is a very valid thing to do. You've got these huge sample libraries, you've got these things where all the fine structures built into it, but pitch bend is a, a useful control. Pitch wheels have always been good, but you watch the best of anything. You know, I can make fun of pitch wheels, but watch the best pitch wheel performers on YouTube. It's just amazing, right? So pitch wheels are good, and there's a new way to do that. Similarly, aftertouch is fine. Um, and it's a new way to do that. Uh, and you can control all the synthesizers, all the stuff you already have and you're familiar with, and that's great. Um, and, and it's not what I do, you know, it's, it's not what I'm contributing to the world, but, well, actually more on that later. It, it, it's something you can do with Continuum, it's actually not always bad. Um, and others want a new way to use their sampler. Well, it's sort of a related thing. The sampler is an existing synth, so you basically want a different way to do what you already, you know, an extension to what you already have. And uh, that's nice, but there's a lot of expressive controllers out there that do that, that are very cost effective, that won't take you a long time to learn, 
and that are designed to try to make it easier. Where there are lots of videos to help you set up and help you uh, use whatever equipment you already have. So, uh, but some people uh, that buy these expressive controllers are really looking for this immediacy, uh, immediacy and responsiveness akin to the, the experience playing acoustic instruments. And this acoustic-like instrument experience is covered. If you look at any advertisement from these uh, uh, controllers that really are providing a new way to do pitch bend and aftertouch, they claim this is equivalent and the same as you know, that acoustic immediate experience. And that's just not true. Uh, and anybody who's really played Continuum for a while knows that. It's just not true. Uh, and I can give a bunch of reasons here. I'm obviously talking about the Continuum, and so uh, you can believe that or not, but play, uh, really play one for, for several hours, really look into it deeply uh, uh, before you decide um, uh, I'm just a poor salesman, uh, and, and that's that. Uh, but yeah, they need a Continuum. So the acoustic-like experience requires a Continuum sensitivity. Sensitivity is a huge issue. If you really want to control the fine structure of something, the first five to 15 milliseconds of a sound is extremely important. It's as important as the rest of it. If you reduce that to a single strike value or uh, key velocity value, you've just thrown away, psychoacoustically, the most important part of a sound. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and, and anybody who's done audio editing knows if you take a long sustain of something and if, if you can do it smoothly, maybe with additive synthesis or something, uh, uh, stick on an attack of a different instrument, the thing sounds like whatever the attack was, you know, it put a trumpet sustain on a, on a violin attack. This is one of the things I did way back when in the, uh, in the 80s. Yeah, you know, it sounds like a really crappy violin. It sounds like a cigar box violin, but the attack is what it tells you what it is. You know, the Roland D50 was built around that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so the, but that's something that somehow people forget. And, and you know, this being in love with using your existing stuff where the attack structure is, I mean, sample libraries are amazing. And it is true, if you have a good sample library, on day one you can do some quite cool things and you know, if you practice and you figure out how to layer things properly and how to process things properly, you can do amazing things. It's not that samples are bad, it's just not, that's not what this experience is about. So a detailed expressive shaping of notes takes facts and accurate sensing. Uh, the problem now is that the terminology and the whole expectation of expressive controllers is interchangeability. So music stores all over the world now have expressive controllers I put it in quotes because it's expressive. I mean, pitch bend wheels are expressive. Lots of things are expressive. So it's not, you know, what are you going to tell me? A piano isn't expressive because it doesn't have, you know, an acoustic piano isn't expressive? Yeah, come on. Uh, so the, the whole word expressive is kind of a <coughs> marketing um, uh, BS anyway. But what's called expressive controllers now um, uh, that use, uh, I mean, if you think, uh, if you were at the party last night, you know that piano can be quite expressive. And so can, you know, so can a melodica, which comes out of a plastic box. Uh, so, can, so can all sorts of things. It's quite amazing. Um, so the music stores all over the world have expressive controllers that use uh, slow and inaccurate sensing. Um, if you do any fair test, you will, you will notice that. Uh, they do interpolation and, um, of, of these very slow and inaccurate sensing so that it sounds smooth. And then automation of details, for instance, you know, attack details are saying if you want fast response and you have slow sensing, well, you have to automate uh, much. So, well, okay, that doesn't give you the acoustic-like experience. What it does do, and what it is necessary for, is for working with all the existing synthesizers, which are actually meant for something that gives even less information, right, that starts and stops things. So that's, uh, uh, that's fine, they have their place. The problem is that if people are looking for that acoustic experience, uh, acoustic-like experience, as I call it, for lack of better words, that's not going to give it to them. And there is no other controller in the world that gives a, a sensitivity of uh, 1 500th of a semitone, uh, which was something that was even in my 1982, I was impressed. I figured that out very early on, well, I, could, I sort of knew what a violin was. Uh, 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 you got 90 dB of pressure here. I can show you how that's measured. Uh, there's many different ways to measure pressure. So you gotta be a little careful. Um, the pressure sensitivity is often confused for, oh, I need to use you know 21 bits of pressure when you're playing or something. Uh, when you're in the attack portion that I was talking about, the pressure change, well, pressure starts from zero. It changes 100% uh, in the attack portion. And seven bits is plenty as long as you're doing it very quickly. As long as you have many samples, seven bits is fine. As, you know, the seven bit value for pressure for this three quarter millisecond is going to do fine. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. But if you have very long sustained things where you're like, uh, 
listening to the relative beats, even if you're not changing pitch, the pressure is very important for um, various effects. So anyway, so uh, the, the pressure for especially longer sustained things where your air picks up on it, similar for one five hundred semitone. If you're shredding and you're playing, well, like Mr. Gensmer was at the end there, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Oscar Sala was playing, and the thing I played yesterday, yeah, the fastest passages, you're not going to hear if he's accurate to a 500th of a semitone, you're not going to hear if he's accurate to five or ten cents. Uh, same in violin playing or anything else. But in long, sustained things, if they can roll your finger and have the beats melt away, that really matters. And, you know, uh, I, I posit that any synthesis of that does not do that, where you can't make the beats melt away by by finger control, well, it's really lacking something serious. Finally, there's a 330 microseconds. Again, you can discuss endlessly, well, if I play 85 notes at once or sit on my continuum, it's not going to be able to transmit over MIDI after 330 microseconds. Well, we can talk about that. But uh, when you're playing, certainly when you're playing single note lines, uh, MIDI is uh, oh quite fast God. and uh, fast enough to, if you're very careful about it and you've oversampled it, you're not just sending your data at the rate that it comes in, but you have a much higher data rate that then you uh, carefully translate to MIDI, you can get very good results. For any of you players that have been around for a while, I should have done some party. Um, one thing you can do is take a continuum uh, with that routing map. Be careful when you do this. Uh, may, mm -hmm. Maybe ask me about it, but you can plug in the output. Am I talking too much? Yeah, oh, look you have 10 minutes. Dang. <laughs> um, but, but you can uh, copy input to output through MIDI. It's really going at MIDI rate. Um, you know, you have to do the routing right so it's not, uh, it doesn't flood itself. You don't want the surface going directly, you want to go through MIDI. You will be able to play all sorts of things. And it, it is very hard to, you know, we do this test to keep ourselves on. A, B, it's really... It, it's really different. And there are corner cases you can find. Certainly, if you, you know, take a, um, uh, well, what I had is a meter stick, you know, put it down and it play, you know, okay, the response to getting a blah, 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 uh, it takes a little longer over it. Well, okay. If you're doing that, that's nice expressive playing, and maybe MIDI will slightly change your expression. Um, but if you're playing single note lines, or even if you're playing uh, uh, multiple notes, it, because <coughs> psychoacoustically it's so hard for you to pick up on more detail. Um, luckily, as a viola player in that section, uh, it's very hard for people to tell exactly what I'm doing when the whole choir is singing and, and the pit orchestra is playing. Um, so, um, but I say, there are cases where all of these accuracies do matter, not in everything you do, but in some, this is essential for the audio feedback loop. If you want to have skilled performance, like world-class performers, you know, you need that. Acoustic-like experience requires the Egan Matrix capabilities. Here's another thing. I mean, yes, there are many synthesizers out there. There are, uh, uh, in fact, any general purpose language, if you program in C language or assembly language, okay, that'll do it. But the Egan Matrix is, you know, realistically, if you're programming the same, well, we've tried that. You know, I program, was programming in C for the specialty sounds. Some of them are pretty nice. They were prototyped in Kima, which is a real-time environment. So some of them are pretty nice, but also Kima is a general-purpose language. But if you look at a, you know, built-in thing that you're going to have in the synthesizer, um, uh, the Egan matrix uh, is uh, very unique. And for anybody who has used it, they know that. So ask somebody who's been experienced with it. Um, uh, it's not a general-purpose program. Um, uh, but it's uh, very much made for the continuum and uh, uh, for this fast acoustic-like feedback loop. For keyboards, synthesizers really are interchangeable, as I said before, because you only start and stop notes. All the fine structure is canned, and you're doing sort of higher level stuff. Is that just bad? Am I being negative? Well, I don't know. Like, I'm a piano, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a violin viola player. Uh, that whole wash of notes you can get out of a piano because you're just hitting the right lever and you're not worrying about your vibrato, you're not worrying about your other things on an acoustic piano, it is, is unparalleled. And nobody can tell me that piano is unexpressive. But the, most, the single most important expressive thing you can do on a violin, namely vibrato, doesn't even exist on a piano. So they're different. And again, this is a different world. I'm not saying keyboards are bad. Certainly don't buy a continuum because you expect to replace your keyboard because it's just better. Uh, don't do that. Um, <laughs> But uh, fine expressive shaping of individual notes requires this tight integration between synthesis and the details of physical feel and function of the controller. And last night, it was actually the first time I've heard an external controller that had any, was really making any use of the Egan matrix. And while, you know, when you play a theremin, it always sounds like a theremin, it was gorgeous. It was really gorgeous. I mean, and, and, and I'm not a theremin builder, I'm not a theremin builder. I've never heard theremin converted to MIDI and actually improving thereby. 
And so I, this has to do with Randy's uh, performance skills, it has to do with his software skills and actually writing, you know, fantastic, but hey, do their own horn, it has to do with the E matrix too. Uh, because it's made for that tight integration. Now those sounds would have to, you know, to really perfect that stuff, the sounds would have to be uh, uh, customized and stuff uh, uh, <coughs> for that environment because it's very different uh, 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 than the uh, continuums uh, um, uh, sensitivity numbers for a theremin. If you were to make the same list, it would be very different. But um, uh, in any case, uh, uh, there's at least one person out there who, who doesn't play continuum, at least not yet. Um, and uh, Andrew uh, understands this, so this is this is great. Um, the Egan matrix closes this audio, audio feedback loop in a way that's uh, great, and I'm talking too long. Continuum confusion. People think of the continuum as another expressive controller, like I'm saying, it's extra confusing because the continuum can make MPE, and you can find videos online where the continuum is controlling sound, uh, you know, sample libraries and stuff. And what people do is, oh, like, well, I want a fair comparison, so I'm going to take. Expressive controller X and a continuum controlling contact or something. Because that's a fair comparison. Okay, so that's kind of hard because, uh, so it's sort of a trap that I do MPE because, hey, it is useful, but, you know, I want to build the best experience I can, uh, um, the best instrument I can, and it's important to remember that the continuum can be used as a new way to do pitch bending after touch, can be used to do your uh, existing uh, synthesizer, and that's not an evil thing. That is, can be very useful musically. Can be very expedient. If that's all you do with it, you're whacked. Why did you spend so much money? <laughs> but if you, but it, it, it's important to have that in your as a capability. And in fact, one of the reasons I find MPE so important is I want people practicing continuum. I want them mostly concentrating on Egan matrix. If they're spending all their time trying to configure their dang synthesizers to do some fill-in part or, or, or even whatever, you know, just experiment with it, whatever it is, I don't want them wasting their time on it. I want them to be able to select MPE mode and just play. So that's, uh, uh, that's a big thing. Yeah, the thing that makes it continue really unique and uh, worth a big bucks, the reason I have you know, all this mechanical stuff inside, the reason I have uh, all these expensive Hall Effect sensors and processing power uh, in there way beyond what uh, any other uh, expressive controller uh, has, um, well, it's for this unparalleled depth of experience. And how many minutes do I have left? Am I at zero yet? Oh, you got about five. Okay, good. Um, there's unparalleled depth of experience and timbral interaction. Now, depth of experience, you know, my wife said, so what the heck does that mean? And I said, oh, I can change it to something else. And no, 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 just explain what it means. So, okay, I'll give you an example. And she said, yeah, just say that, it'll be fine. I have her check my slides because I don't even let my students do PowerPoint. So I, I, this is my first PowerPoint presentation um, and it works. It's fine. Uh, for my students, I want them to concentrate on building their electrical engineers, not PowerPoint writers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want them to, and it's good, important to be able to do a good presentation, but they've honed those skills, just like test taking skills, they know how to do that. I want them to really be able to build things. Um, in, in this case here, this unparalleled depth of experience, what I'm talking about. So, um, I, if you know me, you've heard this example, um, but uh, I have a neighbor down the street, uh, uh, she's a gardener. And so, like, I, I liken it to the depth of experience as, uh, in comparison with gardening. If you push in plastic flowers, or you do the real gardening experience, you know, from, from the road, from the distance, plastic flowers look about the same. Actually, you can't, there's good enough ones that if you take your time buying the right ones, boy, it looks really good. But there's this depth of experience involved. Right? For the gardener, the first thing you got to do is prepare the soil, maybe add sand or, or, or maybe fertilizer, depending on what the plants are. You got to worry about the shade and plant the right things around them or, or find the right location. You got to worry about the slugs and the snails and figure out how to get rid of those. Uh, you get just endless stuff and you really got to coax this thing to life. Uh, and got to dig in the dirt, you know, these are real things. And that's a depth of experience that's very different than pushing in plastic flower, and yes, she would be, not only not enjoy it, she would be offended if I gave her plastic flowers, uh, she'd much rather have something else. Uh, so that's a depth of experience, does that matter? I, I think yes, it, it definitely does. Uh, people looking for acoustic -like instruments uh, need a continuum, they tend to give up after trying something else that claims to do all the same stuff, well yeah, the continuum has flowery language too, it claims to do the same stuff. Um, you know, how do you tell? Uh, uh, this is the one that, that is uh, a real problem actually now because uh, expressive controllers are represented now all around the world. Everybody who goes to their local music store knows what an expressive controller is. 
Uh, and if they try it for, for a while or even buy one and, and get into it for a while and then get bored, well, they know that didn't, you know, they go back to their acoustic instruments and think if they really want that experience or they figure, well, electronics doesn't do that. So uh, someone with an unfulfilling expressive controller experience is not going to go out and spend yet more money to buy a continuum. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, so, so it's a serious thing. It's actually uh, uh, the rise of expressive controllers has raised awareness, but awareness in a way that uh, uh, me, you know, it's this expressive controllers are generic. They can control what I already have. Uh, they, you know, they're, they're all about the same. Uh, there's basically a keyboard and not a keyboard, and those are the two choices. So, um, I, of course, this was going to be an interactive talk. I was only going to talk for a few minutes. <laughs> uh, my day job is teaching at a university. At least, you know, you guys don't have to do a test later and regurgitate everything I said. Uh, so th that's good. Um, so I love working on Continuum. Working with Ed Egan, and this is an honest statement, this is not just a uh, marketing campaign here, has been the engineering dream of my life. Ed, of course, also does this as a labor of love. Uh, he doesn't earn anything for it, but it's just been totally fantastic to really make something world-class. And I've met so many wonderful people. As I sort of intimated before, some are very famous. In fact, I would name drop, except uh, uh, famous people don't, you know, seems rude, and, and I feel dumb asking, can I use your name? Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, very, you know, uh, a very cool, every once in a while students see like, uh, well, like one of my favorite is A.R. Rahman seems to call me right during lecture every single time. I can drop his name because he doesn't care. But, uh, uh, you know, and my Indian students are just completely, you know, then they want my signature. You know, they want my name. Uh, you know, before I couldn't get them to study, and now, and it works for about two weeks, but then it's back to, gosh, this is a lot of math. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, uh, yeah, the famous people are often great. Some of them have uh, issues and are really not fun people to be around. But, but even, even otherwise, uh, uh, the not so famous people whose lives are actually changed by playing an instrument, boy, you know, that, that's just great. Uh, my commitment to the continuous lifelong, it doesn't, I uh, say here, you know, cont contribution to the troubled world. This may sound uh, like a silly quote, but I, I really do think it's true. You know, the world would benefit from more people having real relationships, really doing performance. You know, the $1.99 iPad app is nice, and it's not a bad thing. You know, casual music making is great to be sitting on a train and do something musical rather than just watching funny cat videos or something. Um, you know, it's all good. Even funny cat videos, they make you laugh. What the heck? You know, that's great. Um, but, but the thing is, uh, I think something like gardening, the slower things, the things that take many years to, to really perfect and build up and where, you know, in the end, you're not going to have the greatest garden in the world. You're not going to have any, that's not why you do it. It's not a contest in that sense, it's because you love it. I think in a, in a troubled world, these are important things. And I think a lot of our uh, intensity, even in my own life, a lot of my intensity is slow down. Uh, yeah, so I'd love for people to play. Um, and since we're out of time, I will add, uh, open it up for discussion now. Uh, <laughs> I got to say everything you did. Um, uh, so, yeah, and, and, but these are sort of serious things. Let me know by email and by other ways. I mean, Christophe wrote me because I was sort of asking him. But, you know, I don't know what people can tell from YouTube and Vin, uh, Vimeo. For one thing, there's so much stuff there that it's very hard to dig through it and find things. For another thing, there's plenty of really, you know, horrible... I bought my Continuum today, look what I did, videos, and you know what? There's some really good ones of those too, which is weird. Uh, so, so I don't know, and are those even good? Or is that giving the wrong impression? Is that saying, oh yes, you know, buy this and it'll sound like, like this person who has just this weird God-given skill. I remember a, a kid, uh, she, she drove me nuts. Uh, 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 she, she would just never practice. She was the most obnoxious person in the orchestra and stuff. Anybody know who Alison Krauss is? Anybody familiar with her? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, she's, you know, she was just, you know, she, I mean, at least I had to practice because my mom made me, but anyway, she was a wild kid, and I, I think she actually tried to study music for a while, but anyway, eventually that didn't really work out. Um, uh, so, you never know. Uh, there are people with incredible skill uh, out there. And, uh, yes, so she was, an, she was an example of those people that I'm not supposed to be when I was growing up. Um, and there you go. Uh, so can people tell from uh, uh, YouTube or Vimeo? Uh, I think it is very hard. I, I get people, now that we have uh, expressive controllers that are uh, uh, a soft surface, it's not quite as much, but people used to be surprised that it didn't feel like an iPad because that's what they expected it to feel like. You know, can you tell from flowery text? If I try to put up more text where I spam people with uh, one of the spam services, does that really help? Um, uh, you know, can people tell from engineering specs? I can give you numbers 
you know, I can tell you how fast is an A to D converter serial communications with, a, you know, I don't know. I can even, even those 500th of a half step numbers, they make a difference if you look at like, uh, well, one of the controllers says, and the price range of this thing is the Seaboard Grand. If you go to Sandro, you hear quarter steps. And I can say that because there's lots of things online that's not something mean I'm saying, that's just a fact. And, you know, if quarter step accuracy is good enough for you, that's fine. Uh, but it's not, you know, it's not what the continuum is about. So, um, uh, and if you don't believe that, if you're out there in, in, uh, in computer land, I can send you videos. This, this isn't just something mean I'm saying. But, you know, still, if I give people specs, you know, it's like telling them, oh, yes, let's spend so many trillion dollars on this, you know, on sending kids to college or on our next war or on whatever it is. People don't know what those numbers mean anyway. Um, so that's, it's very hard, I'm not sure. Anyway, I love suggestions, and since I've talked too long, I'm out of time. But uh, please communicate by email. I answer email once a day. I'm always afraid of email because, well, I get lots of spam. But beyond that, often when people I really like uh, contact me, it's because they're continuing to explode. If you ever have good news, you know. <laughs> that too. Uh, uh, but I do try to do 24-hour stuff. I, I do care about you. I know that turnaround is slow. Like, if you call, if you find my cell phone number somewhere, or Google will tell you my home number, and you know, if one of my kids answers, email is better. It does take 24 hours. It's not because I don't care. It's just because I have a day job, uh, and when you're in a lecture in front of students, the last thing they want to watch is their professor who's just yelled at them for getting off the phone uh, to uh, to be talking to you. Right. So, uh, so I really can't do the phone support, and it's not because I don't care. But at least when you do communicate with me, you know, I build the instrument, I really care. Um, I have another request, uh, which is, uh, since I didn't leave time for answers anyway, I just want to say one more thing. Uh, there is some confusion about edge roll and things. Every once in a while, somebody who wants some feature in the Egan matrix and just paid their money for the mm -hmm. continuum and it arrived yesterday and they haven't been able to figure it out yet, every other synthesizer they were instant success at, um, will write an angry email to Ed, why don't you have this feature? You know, every other synthesizer has this. Uh, Ed doesn't even get paid for things. Please send your uh, support questions to me. Please be nice. I mean, Ed is a nice guy. He'll answer. His stuff is similar. He doesn't get paid. He's, he's really eager to help. He'll never say no because he's too nice a guy. Uh, uh, please be nice to these people because they're, nobody's getting paid for this, you know, and, and I, I really wanted, uh, same with you, if I ever ask you, hey, can somebody visit and, and see your continuum? Say no if you don't like having visitors. Don't feel like you have to be a salesman. Don't feel like you have to play a concert for them. Um, it's just I don't have it in every store, and it is really, really helpful if you guys uh, let people in, as, as Rob and other people here know. Thank you very much. One of the big thrusts of this discussion has been you know, the integration between software and hardware, um, and how important that is to you to get that uh, acoustic type of interaction. But, you know, two things that jumped out at me yesterday was the uh, MIDI, uh, using the alternative MIDI controller with your, the uh, Egan Matrix software. Um, and then also the the new uh, CD control or the expanding CD control over uh, you know modular synthesizers. Yes, actually the CV isn't new. We we've had it since uh, 2006. I, I forget what it is, but and and it's been great, especially early on when I didn't have a built-in synthesizer. Uh, just to put in a plug for modulars, the fact that you can get in there and change the algorithms is huge. Yeah, you know, I guess my two questions really is you know first one would be. Uh, do you see an expanding role for the use of uh, other MIDI controllers talking to the uh, Egan Matrix software, and like what uh, are the Egan Matrix system, and what would that role be? And uh, well, I, I think it's in its infancy. Um, I I always interrupt because I like to talk too much. But uh, like yesterday, I heard the best external control I've ever heard, and without any offense, you know, it's also the best conversion to any MIDI to anything that I've ever heard from. But compared to the finesse you're going to hear tonight, like the three pieces of string or something, it still isn't there. It, it, it's a long way off from that. And so my scariness is right now, one of the few things is, you know, by the time you watch a video online and it's being controlled by, you know, some expressive controller, you figure, well, I can pay $200 by that, or $600 or 600 euros, whatever, to, you know, go for now, uh, by that expressive controller and get the same sound. I mean, that's the last nail in the coffin for something that I worked on for, for 30 years. So I'm actually worried about it, as is Ed. Uh, he's very proud of it. You know, anytime people will hook up a random controller 
and just play without really being familiar with the continuum, with a really no, and that's one of the reasons I want people to really play continuum, play internal sounds before they hook up their other synthesizers, because they don't even know what it does uh, when they're, you know, what's special about it. Uh, because there's a very high level here. If, if I were to present you, even or if I were presented with a, being a B minus musician with a $500 violin and a $50,000 violin, I may be hard pressed to even tell the difference. And a very skilled performer can make that $500 violin sound quite amazing. But in the end, there is a real difference between those instruments, and I think it's so fine. So it's a real trap, and we talked about this. It's a real trap. There's certainly interest in getting the Egan Matrix cheap, um, but uh, uh, if I may toot my own horn, the, the hardware in there is extremely high performance for you know, for what it is. We spent incredible time on the hand optimization of all the SIMD code and all this stuff. We spent years on algorithms that really work well with uh, interaction stuff. And uh, at this point, um, yeah, it's a scary thing. Uh, so, so, so as a practical thing, I'm not even making money at it. And then to kill it that really nobody even buys the instrument anymore. Wow. So uh, I welcome people to control it. I think it's actually very much like having control of external synthesizer. It can be very useful. Um, but buy a continuum. Really learn to play it. If it's not worth 3000 bucks to you right now, there is no other option. Because if you have a continuum and can really play it well, and you can control it well, guess what? That'll really get my, uh, uh, get me excited about it. And then things will change. But I don't do things because, oh, this promise of, of expressive controls. I've been around too long. Been worked on something for 30 years where the new shrink wrap stuff that, that comes out every year. It, it's just, you know, it's not my world, and, and I don't want to become inadvertently part of that world uh, uh, and totally kill off what my life stream is. And I, and I do absolutely, after this last year, I, and, and talking to people that, that decided to buy something or other instead of a continuum before they ever had a chance to try a continuum, um, uh, has to be convinced of that. So that's an unfortunate thing, but uh, that, that's what's going on there. Well, it, this, my second question just kind of ties into that. In a, it basically is, is, is wondering what do you see as the potential for that interconnectivity and what are the areas that interest you? Because we've certainly seen from MIDI that having a standard for talking between different platforms has been hugely beneficial. Um, but we don't really have that possibility at the level of what you're, you're talking about. Oh, every, I, I want to say everything inside here is a MIDI synthesizer. The Egan Matrix is a MIDI synthesizer, everything is a MIDI synthesizer. But it's, but it's not at the level of uh, timeliness, sensitivity, and accuracy that you have with your internal system. That's what distinguishes the continuum. Oh, but, but, but I'm, I'm sorry, uh, no, I, I can take MIDI out here, uh, put it back in again, and you won't be able to tell. Except in very few corner cases, there are some. I, I do use 21-bit pitch, bend, uh, 21 bit, uh, pitch bends rather than the normal MIDI 14. If you are doing, you know, very, very fine things, that may matter, but it is very rare that you can tell. I just do it because internally I don't have a speed limitation. But no, there is a, no, and, and something like MPE, you know, it's always the lowest common denominator thing. MPE really pushes strike, so reduce your whole attack trajectory to a single number. MPE really pushes this idea, you either go in 7-bit mode or 14-bit mode. Well, that, yes, MIDI isn't fast enough to do 14-bit mode all the time, and 7-bit isn't accurate enough. But if you use 7 bits during the attack and 14 bits later, MPE does not have any way of telling the synthesizer this is going to be upgraded, uh, updated at you know every update. Every continuous controller has some sample rate, uh, whether it's a pedal, whether it's continuous, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, so if you're going to update, say, every five milliseconds, you need to be able to tell the synthesizer that so that the synthesizer can filter at that rate. What happens with MPE is the same as what happens with pitch bend wheels and everything else. People just filter the heck out of things so that the cheapest controller still sounds smooth, which means you've wrecked it. So, it, it, you know, the MPE in some ways, yeah, it's nice for hooking up things, but it's, it's the lowest common denominator. Uh, it's not, uh, the MPE people, as far as I can tell, have not been interested in what are the things that really make it high performance. And that's a mean thing to say, but, you know, I'm busy, I got a day job and stuff, and I can put things out there, and then once you get ignored a couple times, and you say, okay, fine, forget it. Um, so, so I think uh, MPE is great, but it, it's not pushing the limits in that way. It's making it easy to hook up things to your existing synthesizers, and that's very important because there's a huge palette of sounds. I mean, if I said otherwise, it'd be ridiculous. You know, you listen to synthesizers out there, they're, they're great, they're just not this. 
where do you think the opportunities for that interconnectivity are that can maximize the potential of the continuum? Well, I've been at this for 30 years. I, it's rare to meet anybody in electronic music who's, who even knows of the issues. And so in that way, it's very hard. Um, but as you get more people playing, and uh, certainly if there were a Hannon method or a Suzuki method for, for the continuum, you know, these things would really, really help. But until you get to a level like, actually, that the Martineau has been at, where, you know, kids that are very young in Paris can take Martineau lessons and take them all their life, just like you take piano lessons. Until you get to that sort of level, I think it is very hard. And I think the power of bucks being made in the synthesizer business and the existing corporations and just the re reality of, of business decisions makes it very hard right now. It's not, you know, people aren't running charities and basically I can be very proud of what I do and I am, but, you know, I don't employ anybody. I don't, you know, I, I don't do all the things that other companies are doing. So I don't object to what they're doing, but, but I don't want to kill myself in order to be a blip on the this was new this year radar, uh, which is, you know, what totally dominates the synthesizer industry. So uh, that's rather crass. I'm sure I'm going to get some bad emails now, but uh, <laughs> hey, you know, uh, that's why we're here. I'm going to address some of your points in, in my talk later about actual you know, Oh, and also, I don't speak for the whole community. Right. Uh, okay. so, so, you know, uh, but, but to be honest, I, I'll, I'll just to be crass, if Randy here actually gets a continuum and really learns how to play it, takes the time, though he's busy, but as a, as a good performing artist who really has other things to do, if he has that kind of commitment, oh, you know, I'll certainly look at least specifically theremin control uh, is very interesting to me. So, so, the, but you know, as me having spent 30 years on it and having seen a first demonstration of something that's still quite rough, but is clearly new, uh, uh, you know, it, it's got to be more. Uh, somebody like Ed bought a continuum, and you know, he, he'd been spending years, and years, and years, his whole life of of synthesizers were brought to the table and I just can't afford to to take this leap especially as I said you know I, I don't think I'm saying anything different now than I was saying yesterday it's just for me it's a you know nail in the coffin to support what everybody else is saying which is oh you can get all the same sounds out of any controller you know that's just unfortunate but it's the way it is <laughs>